Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Maxcotech Learning. I hope you are all doing well. So this time I've brought another interesting topic for you guys. We are going to stream the data from AWS Firehose data stream to Snowflake. So the video outline includes, first of all, we are going to set up Snowflake resources like a user, role, warehouse, etc. And then we are going to grant permissions to this role on this user. And uh, then we are going to go ahead and set up the Firehose data stream to set the destination as Snowflake. And finally, we are going to do end-to-end -end testing and see how it goes. And in the end, we are going to see what are the limitations and finally conclude. Later in the end, if you get time, I'm going to show you, uh, based on the limitation, how we can offload the data to multiple tables in Snowflake using Snowflake streams. So let's get started. We start it's important to mention that this is still a preview feature which is available in limited regions of aws and it uses the feature snowflake snowpipe streaming to stream the data record by record into the rows as soon as it's available so as a result customer reduced cost latency and complexity of delivering streams into snowflake as compared to the standard snowpipe feature in snowflake where the customers have to load the data from files in micro batches all right, so let's start off with creating the resources in Snowflake first. So I have connected my Snowflake with the data grip. That's the general client side that I use to interact with my Snowflake. Right, so first of all, we are going to create the Snowflake service user. Then we are going to create a service role. Then let's create a dedicated warehouse for this ingestion. We call it telemetry ingestion extra small. And finally, setting up some parameters for the warehouse, so auto suspend 60, resume true, uh, we given it a small uh, one size cluster and scaling policies economy. Next up, we are going to give some grants to the users. First of all, we assign this role to the user. We assign this role as a default role to this user as well. Default warehouse this for this user. We are, we are not going to set any password for this because we are going to use the private and public key for this user. And I'm going to show you how we can generate that shortly. I'm on Mac machine and if you are, or as well as if you are in Linux, you can use OpenSSL to generate the key pairs. So I would say OpenSSL gen RSA, I would call this as pribatekey.pem and the size is 2048. Uh, so this is going to generate a private key for us. There it is. And now from this, we can generate the public key. Uh, for that, we are going to say open SSL RSA, mention the private key and then mention pub out and the name of the public key that will be generated. So uh, there it is for us. And if you are in Windows, you can use the tool like uh, Putty to generate these keys as well. So let's open up the public key. As you can see, it's here. So one thing you have to do is you have to remove the new lines from this. Uh, you have to be very careful not to remove any other bits. Right, so you see it's only one line now. So we copy this. Ultra user service telemetry user set RSA public key as the one that we generated here, right? Okay, so we have the user grants all set it up. We're going to use the private key when we are going to set up the AWS Firehose. So moving on, we have to set some additional grants to this role, uh, specifically usage on the database and uh, usage monitor operate on the warehouse. Then some schema grants. In this case, first we create the schema and use the schema and then set up the grants to the role. Then we give some table grants to existing tables and the feature tables in this schema to this role. All right, looks good. So I think one more thing that we will do is let us create a table, uh, call it as telemetry draw and with just one column in there, event as variant. Okay, so that is all for now as a minimum setup to test this out. And now let us go to the AWS site and set up the Firehose data stream. So uh, just to mention this again, that if you're testing this out, it's gonna be only available in limited regions. In this case, US East, US West and Europe Ireland. Right, so let's go ahead and create a Firehose stream uh, source. As of now, we are going to just manually test out the things. So we can say direct put uh, and destination will be Snowflake. So destination setting. So for the account URL, you can use a simple URL version as well, or you can use the private link URL, which is the one that I recommend. To get that, we have to run this command. I'm going to mention this on the description below. You copy that and you paste it over here. All right, for the user, we are going to mention the one that we created earlier. So service telemetry user. 
And the reason I'm calling this as service user service role uh, is because of the fact that there won't be any actual human being operating this uh, user. It's going to be used by this uh, automated service called AWS Firehose Data Stream. So that's why, you know, it's just a way of distinguishing between uh, an actual user and a uh, robotic user. So we call it as service user. Right, so private key will be the one that we generated earlier over here. Again, we have to do the same, uh, remove the begin and end. And you also have to remove the new lines. Right, so it's one line, so you copy and you paste it over here. Uh, we are not going to use any passphrase for now. Uh, so custom snowflake role is going to be the one that we created earlier. VPC ID is a must required when you're using the private link. So to get that, you need to run this command. You copy this and paste it over here. Next up, you have to mention database schema and the table. Database in our case is ADSC dev. Schema will be telemetry test. And table will be telemetry raw. For now, we are going to test this in this table. Um, telemetry raw. Uh, because this table has one column uh, as event, so we use this uh, option, use variant column. And the column name it will be event. We will test this on the JSON keys as well shortly. So that is all for the Snowflake settings. In addition, you also have to provide the S3 uh, as well, uh, where it can throw the errors records, the streams that fail to load the data in Snowflake. So you have to provide a bucket. Uh, let's say I'm gonna put this in here, max and let's call it as error passing feeds will be the prefix. And that is all, I guess. Okay, let's go ahead and create a Firehose stream. All right, let's give it a moment to set it up. Right, so Firehose stream is all active. Let us um, verify that the table is all set it up and it's empty with one column event. And uh, so I like the fact that AWS has provided this utility to test out the Firehose uh, put source instead of writing your own. So we're going to try this for now. So let's start sending the demo data. And um, yeah, so it's, it's sending right now. And while it's doing that, we can go to the destination error logs. Right, so it seems like something is not right here. As you can see, we have error logs for the destination. Um, it says that Firehose is unable to connect to Snowflake. Please make sure the account URL and all of that is uh, correct, including the networking rules and etc. So after some debugging and digging around, I realized that I didn't update the public key of this user. Uh, it was the previous one which I was using for testing it out before making this video. Uh, so yeah, I have to make sure that this uh, is uh, up to date with the new key uh, because uh, this is the public key and the corresponding private key is the one that I mentioned while setting up the Firehose Snowflake connection. Okay, so now let's try it out this time after I updated the keys of the service uh, user of Snowflake. Uh, make sure this table is, uh, yeah, it's empty. And I start sending the data and um, we shouldn't be receiving any more log error logs here, hopefully. So 26 were the previous ones. Uh, we go to destination error logs, 26. Seems like it should be all working now because we are not seeing any error logs here. So we go back to the table and we do select all. There you go, you can see the data coming in actually, very nice. So you can see uh, because it was one column event with a variant type. So anything that's coming in, it's just gonna throw it in as a dedicated row in the table. Uh, it should be coming in constantly as well. So you can see the records are increasing and increasing because it's still sending the data. We can stop this now. Right, so this seems to be working fine as expected with the uh, table of one column. Now let us go ahead and create a table with multiple columns and each column should be matching exactly as the JSON field here, change, price, sector, and ticker symbol. So we call the table as uh, telemetry raw columns. Uh, with the column names as sticker symbol and sector as varchar, whereas change and price both are numbers. So let us go ahead and create this. All right, so this table is empty as of now. Let us go back to our uh, Firehose settings over here, configurations, we edit this. So this time we are going to use, use JSON keys as the table column names. 
save settings. Oh, sorry, I forgot to update the table name. So table name in this case should be this one. Save. All right. So now let's go ahead and throw some data into the new table. Right. So the data is going through uh, from Firehose to this table. Now let us see if it is there. Select all from telemetry door columns. Nice. As you can see, it's actually parsing those JSON keys and uh, landing them into their dedicated uh, columns. Very nice. So while I was testing this, uh, I, I experienced several types of uh, issues and problems uh, with different error logs. Uh, I think I remember one of which was uh, unable to access the table. Uh, so like for that, you have to make sure that you have proper user role warehouse and all of the grants are properly done before testing this out. I'm going to share all of these snowflake commands with grants and everything <clears throat> into my GitHub repository from where you can take this and use it as is. Just to mention that these public and private keys are just made for this demo and will be discarded after that. So now speaking about the limitations, as I told you that this is still a preview feature and it's not recommended to be used in the production yet. And that's the fact that it lacks uh, major features like uh, sending the data to multiple Snowflake tables based on, you know, parsing the data, but that's not there. So right now we are just stuck with the, you know, landing all of the data into one single Snowflake table. From there, we can, you know, offload the data to several other tables based on uh, maybe let's say if you have a game telemetry data coming in uh, with the event types, uh, you can like create multiple tables of event types and offload the data over there. In addition, I would also like to share some questions that I asked the AWS dev technical support team regarding this feature that what sort of limitations uh, it currently has because they haven't mentioned this in detail and they're just simply saying that don't use it in production yet. So what they mentioned is that, and these are exactly their words, our internal team are advised that they are working on this release for general public and are targeting to release this for general public in mid April of 2024. However, note that this is a tentative and actual date of the release may get changed extended due to any internal reasons. I also was concerned about the costing of this because of the fact that it's using the Snowpipe streaming. So does that mean that we can't utilize the Firehose batching feature? And how does this affect in costing? And what are the major factors in costing? So all of these sorts of questions, they have, they've replied me a single line answer for this is that unfortunately, this information is not available yet. Please wait for the general access public release and documentation updates. And I also asked them about the limitation of the fact that it allows to throw the data in single Snowflake table. For that, they have replied me that I can help you raise this as a feature request for this functionality, which I hope they are going to work on it. But yeah, if any updates comes for this feature, I'm definitely going to bring another video for you guys when it's going to be released for the public with the proper documentations. And hopefully by then we may have answers to all of these questions. So I hope this video was informative to you guys. And if it was, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and do ask any questions if you have in the comments down below. I will try my best to answer them. And yeah, that is all for now. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.